Yeah, just getting a bit closer to, to you, mate. Yeah, I'm just finding it. I've, <laughs> I've never been on that side of the room, so I'm just getting to. <laughs> so I'll hit James on this, is that okay? Yep. So that's the first thing we do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a mile.
Okay, can you hear us okay? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me okay? Yep, thank cool. you. All right, thanks, councillors. <clears throat> and welcome staff and members of the public. Um, thank you all for coming. I declare this meeting open and councillors, we have a request for Councillor Haywood to join us by phone. Uh, those who approve. That's passed. Are you with us there, Councillor Haywood? Oh, I am. Thank you very much. No. Sorry, Mr Chair. Uh, can I just ask the address of Councillor Haywood? Yep. Uh, if we just bring it back up on the screen there, it's uh, on that one, Councillor Steck. Uh, 1 Hopkins Street, Lancelin. Thank you. Moving on, uh, uh, announcements for myself, just the one, the CEO and the Mayor attended the opening of the Labyrinth uh, at Queen's Garden on Sunday, I believe it was, in some nice weather, uh, and they have been, we have donated, they have donated this painting for us, which was uh, from there, so I'm sure that'll find its way in the city there, so obviously, for those who have been on council for a while, we know that project's been uh, in the works for some time, so it's great to see that finally open. We have apologies from Councillor Plum, the Mayor is an apology, and Councillor Steele is on approved leave of absence. So there are a couple of declarations of interest there from myself and Councillor Plum, who's not with us, and I just have one from Councillor Steck for 10.5.2 as well, which is an impartiality interest as well, as she knows one of the tenderers. So, so was there any other declarations of interest, Councillors? Thank you. Could I have somebody move the minutes of the previous meeting, please? Councillor Giles, thank you. A seconder? Councillor Yip, thank you. I'll put that, councillors, on favour? Yeah. That's carried. Thank you. Two minutes from the advisory committees there, councillors. Do we have someone to move those? Um, excuse me, sir. Can I just ask a question? Of course you can. Uh, last week I um, highlighted the fact that the councillors' expenses are not covered. Uh, in relation, sorry. Um, last week I highlighted that last the council expenses in the case of an accident or medical care is not covered whilst on um, council duties, and that was going to be remedied for this week. So has that yep. been remedied? Uh, that was in the policy, CEO. Uh, through you, Mr. Acting Mayor. So it wasn't remedied. Uh, that so that provision was provided. The explanation was provided in an email sent out to all elected members. Uh, that part of the policy has not been changed from previous policies. Uh, so it's clarification about the insurance cover that the city carries and what that insurance cover um, provides in terms of insurance cover for individual elected members. Okay. So for the purpose of accuracy of the minutes, uh, can we then change the minutes uh, or reflect the new minutes uh, to state that uh, or remove that clause? With that paragraph uh, that it says that the medical expenses are not covered, because as present, it is part of that um, policy review development committee minutes. Councillor Steck, with I think through the C, I mean this this will be the minutes. If you want to change that in the policy, which will be coming up in the the next item or an item, um, the minutes as I'm, as far as I'm aware are correct. Um, so the minute the minutes can't be changed, um, but you can obviously argue the the policy and the at the at the item that comes up tonight. So we have the minutes from the advisory committees there. Is somebody happy to move the minutes from these advisory committees? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Councillor McCurry, bet you to it, Councillor Hayward, but will I take your second? Are you happy to second, yeah. Councillor Hayward? Yep, cool. So moved by Councillor McCurry, second by Councillor Hayward. All those in favour? That's carried, thank you. Um, there are no petitions, presentations, deputations. That's fine. Thank you. So, councillors, at the moment, coming out for discussion are the two items that require an absolute majority is 10.1.1 and 10.5.3. I'd assume, Councillor Steck, you may want 10.1.3 out. So, 10.1.1, 10.1.3 and 10.5.3. Are the three that are coming out for and this discussion? Ten five one two, please. Ten five two, sorry, no. ten five one. Yes. So those numbers again: ten point one point one, ten point one point three, ten point five point one, ten point five point three. Is there any others? Ten point one point two. Thank you. Any others, councillors? 
Thank you. Somebody happy to move the remainder on block? Thank you, Councillor Brown. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor McCurry. I'll put that. All in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, Councillor Edward. Thanks, carried unanimously. Uh, so 10.1.1 councillors is a, requires an absolute majority. Do we have somebody to move that? Councillor McCurry, thank you. And a second. Councillor Giles, thank you. Is there likely to be any debate? I'll put that. All in favour? All in favour? Thank you. That's carried. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hayward, you in favour? Jump the gun. 10.1.2. Uh, I may just ask for a mover first. Councillor Steck, you're not prepared to move that? No? I'll, I'll, I'll move it. Yep. Because uh, that's acceptable. But yep. I'll wait for a second. Yep. And do we have a second for this one? I'll have a second, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Hayward, thank you. Um, Councillor Steck. Um, I just want to have the other support and supplies for 4.1 on page 4 of 10 that the uh, city will ensure or provide insurance cover for elected members for A, a personal accident, accident whilst engaged in the performance of the official duties of their office. However, the cover does not include medical expenses. The CEO has already informed yep. us that we yep. are and do Councilor have... Steck. Sorry, Councillor Steck, I believe that may be the next item, the elected member entitlements. This oh, one sorry. is the elected member's request. Sorry, you're correct. Sorry, My apologies. I thought that was on block. Got it all wrong. No problems. Are you still happy to, to have this moved, Councillor Steck, the elected member's request? Uh, no, sir. You don't want this move? Okay. <laughs> can you can you rescind? Just one second. Uh, for, the, for the purpose of it, I'll say it, keep it moved. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Councillor Steck. Uh, anything, anything to add to this item, Councillor Steck? No. Councillor Hayward, do you like to speak to this item? Uh, I would, and hopefully uh, people can hear me okay. Look, I'd encourage councillors to support this motion. It came through the policy committee where we had a look at it. Um, really, all it's just detailing is a, is a different process. Uh, so at the moment, those requests are sent through the Mayor's office, and there's a, a number of uh, individuals that it has to go through in terms of a bit of a chain. Uh, and what this does is it proposes a more efficient system uh, that just gets the job done uh, a bit simpler and a bit easier uh, and hopefully gets the answers to, to the questions that we ask and others are asking us to find out information about a little bit more uh, succinctly and a little bit more quickly. There, are, there, are, there is still provision, as we uh, understood from our briefing session last week, that if there's something that's a matter of policy, uh, those questions and answers will still be sent to all of us um, anyway uh, as part of part of this uh, uh, policy. So it's really, there's no risk. This is, a, uh, this is a simply a, a, a different method of achieving what we've, we've been doing. So I'd encourage Council to, to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hayward. Is there a speaker against Councillor McCleary? I, I find this quite concerning in so much as uh, we're talking about streamlining communication. How do you streamline communication? We're elected members. People contact us. People want a name, okay, or whom that they are going to contact. That's, that's what we're there for. That's how we make ourselves known to the public, that we're there to serve them. So if we, and this is just a small technical Part. So if we say, yes, no worries, I'll write to records. Wow. Wow. Does not very, not a very good look, I don't believe. When we're streamlining, we're going to be talking to staff. We're writing to staff. What were we told as councillors? We are told we talk to the mayor and the CEO. We don't talk to staff. I know it's a it's also a policy where it's just written and it ends up down there. Quite frankly, it's a safety net. It's about accountability. So if we start with writing to the PA about our concern, whether it's a concern that's come through from a resident or whether it's us wanting to know something about a strategic plan or what's happened to such and such, I wasn't at the meeting and I'd like to know what's going on. And then it filters down. So there's accountability. Go the other way. There's no accountability. So if you have 
a judgmental situation whereby a resident has rung up because they've done records, they tell you all the rest of it. Whether they have or not, you take it on face value. You do not judge. Then it goes to the one person and they say, oh, yes, they've done that before. We've done all that information. And it kind of lies dead. So in about six months' time, you're walking down the street and someone says to me, you know, you never got back to me about that situation there. What happened there? And it, it's just not about accountability. You, you really need to know what's happening. I know it's all written here that we are assured through the policy that checks and balances will happen. But quite frankly, I keep coming straight back to it's messy. Communication is messy. There's no such thing as streamlining a conversation to make for money, OK? To enable you to be able to say, well, we've cut staff down by a certain amount of people because we haven't had to go through five levels um, because of all the pettiness of the things that maybe councillors or requests are about. It's already been judged, already, before you get there, that we already have been judged, that we're sending too many much information in, we're asking too many requests. We are absolutely bogging up the system. We need to make it more streamlined. We need to get the councillors to send it to records like every other person does. No, thank you. I'd rather be bogged down. I'd rather have that conversation. And I would rather have to pay extra in my rates if it means that I have the extra two or three people to be able to be there for our community to answer those questions, to have the time to give a detailed, unjudgmental view and a correct view. And that's why I write in. I like to get the words from the horse's mouth to make sure that I have exactly the exact information to be able to give that to somebody else. I'm not saying and I'm not judging our records. I'm saying we are counsellors. We go through the CEO or the mayor. We don't go through staff. So please vote this policy down. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGarry. Is there another speaker for it? I'll speak for it. Um, I think an example last week talking about accountability, Councillor McCleary, in response to that, uh, I had a, a request, I sent it through records. It was the first time I'd used records. Uh, I obviously got the request emailed to me, all the, all the details. Sent it through to records, and within two days, there was a response to my email uh, with, with that uh, outcome. I was then able to follow up with the, with the resident saying, here's the answer. Is there anything else we can help with? So I think in terms of it getting done, it, it worked perfectly fine. Um, so I'm all in favour for it. Again, this is a policy. This is something that uh, the policy committee have come up with and obviously between some of the staff and councillors talking about options. So this is, this is an option that we've come up with. Uh, it's not locked in stone. It's a policy which obviously is reviewed every uh, under a certain time frame anyway. So I'm more than happy to support this and... Um, Let's see how this goes, and I'm sure Councillor McCurry and I certainly appreciate the, the effort you put in for the residents, but I'm sure we can continue to use that through, through the ways I just mentioned. So, councillors, I would urge you to support this one. Is there a speaker against or a question? question. Councillor Smith and then Councillor uh, I just wanted to ask, did you, the reply you got, did that go to all the other councillors? I believe it did, but I could ask. It did not? I thought that was it seemed to... Council Jobs. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Um, I support Council McCleary in this. I didn't uh, agree with this from the beginning. Uh, obviously, I wasn't at the meeting. Uh, I think it was sometime uh, last year, uh, earlier this year, or late last year, with the with the councillors. But I wasn't a part of that discussion. But I uh, I did email to records for the very first time the other day, and I got surprisingly enough a response from Katie. So how does that work? Was she the responsible person for my request? I don't think so, but I didn't get a response from the responsible person. Uh, Katie is not the responsible person to, to the question I asked. The question was misinterpreted anyway. I got a very strange response, which wasn't what I'd asked for. I still haven't got a response to my response to the response. So from my point of view, from my very first experience, it hasn't worked very well. 
So I, I don't think I agree with Councillor McCleary. I don't think we should be asking questions of the same people who everyone, the other 30,000 people in Bunbury are asking the questions of, because I just don't think that's the way it should work. We are councillors. We're here to represent our, our ratepayers, and I don't think that's the way we do it, because we are just asking the same questions of the same people and getting the same answers, uh, instead of being able to advocate for something that we th may think needs to change. So I would urge people to think seriously about this and not, not uh, support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Giles, further speaker for? Councillor Turner, thank you. Regardless of whether we write to records or to Katie directly, we still get the same response. It still goes to the right person and we get a good response with all the detailed information. I've used records many times and I've always got a good answer. And so have the community. If they have a right to records, they also get a reply from the direct person who is going to fix or give the answer to that solution. So I don't see a difference other than fine-tuning the system. If you've got your name councillor, they're going to respond to you. And pretty simply, once they get the system working better, they will respond to all councillors. No difference. And I've had a lot of responses from different departments, but Katie is the one who puts her name down the bottom of the letter. So I'd be voting for it. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Is there a speaker against? Oh, no, I'm just closing. Okay. Is there a speaker against? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Steck. Now. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, look, uh, this is nothing new. Uh, when I first started council, we used to go straight to records before anyway, um, and for whatever reason, you know, the wheel got reinvented. But um, quite frankly, if it takes six months for a response to come back. Well, I, I doubt that because if, it, if time passed, you're going to go back to records and go, well, hang on, I haven't got a response yet. Can I have a response? So, um, and, and having dealt with staff previously, generally speaking, they get back to councillors fairly quickly with detailed information. And if they don't, it's generally because it's more technical and requires further uh, research or, or further um, conversation with the relevant person. The other thing I'll point out is, is that with records, everything that goes through council is recorded. So records is the, um, the number one place that records everything. So technically speaking, every phone call, every email, every file note is meant to go into records. So that if someone pulls up freedom of information, it's the one place they go to. So, and that is streamlining communications, it's streamlining records and it's streamlining responses and um, also the time frame that it takes to get back to uh, us councillors. And I don't believe that we're bogging the system down. I believe that staff are saying, instead of four people doing the one response, one person deals with it and it goes to the right person first and foremost. So I urge you to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Steck. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Yes. Those against? Three against. And that motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we have item 10.1.3 in front of us, which is the elected members' entitlements. Uh, Councillors, do we have a mover for this? Councillor McCleary. I'm happy to do uh, yeah. you? Thank you, Councillor Haywood. Um, nothing, Councillor McCleary. Councillor Haywood. Uh, all, again, all I can say is that uh, this is a terrific policy uh, to have moving forward. It deals with the issues around um, a fair remuneration for councillors um, moving forward without having to have the embarrassment or difficulty of having to make decisions without the support of a policy. Um, so I would always urge people to support it. I understand there may be a, an amendment coming though and um, I'll certainly wait to hear, hear about that. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Steck, is that a question or speaking against? Um, I Chris just want yeah. a question in relation to, as I um, alluded to yes. before, point four. Yep. Um, I want to uh, make sure 
that even though the CEO has given me the assurance that the policy hasn't changed, that the medical expenses for councillors on um, council duties are indeed covered, I want that reflected in the minutes uh, because currently it states in the policy and in the minutes that the city will ensure or will provide insurance cover for elected members for a personal, a personal accident whilst engaged in the performance of the official duties of their office. However, the cover does not include medical expenses. So I just want the minutes to reflect that the, the medical expenses are covered while you're on councillor duties. Even though the CEO has given me assurance, I accept your assurance, Mr CEO. Don't doubt you for one moment, but I want it reflected in the minutes, please. <laughs> CEO. Uh, so just to clarify, the email that was sent to elected members last Friday clarified the wording and what is covered under insurance policy. Part four of the policy you're considering tonight repeats what is covered under our insurance policy. So my suggestion to elected members would be that if that part of this policy wants to be reconsidered, then that part could be reconsidered by the Policy Review and Development Committee, but we'll need to get clarification from our insurer whether that insurance element as act to cover that point that Councillor Steck has raised is even possible to have covered. So, sorry, just to close. Yeah. So currently, the policy, which is a standard policy and has been in place for a number of years, is exactly as the wording that's contained in part four of what's in front of you tonight. Okay, well then, thank you, Mr CEO. Councillor Steck, is this a further question? Uh, yes, um, I would also um, say then, well, can we please then allow for a point four to be referred back to the Policy Review Committee, please, for further consideration? A question, please. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Steck, do you want the, the policy referred back to the, this current policy referred back to the policy committee? Um, in actual fact, I'll move an amendment, sir, to say and suggest that only point four of this policy is referred back to the policy review committee for further consideration to clarify what the insurance coverage is all for. And let me just get some advice on that. Question, Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Councillor McCurry. May, may I suggest that we defer it? May I, may I put a motion forward to defer this whole policy and just deal with it in the next fortnight, next round? If you want to put a, a motion to defer it. something, Thank we you. have no stuff over here. We will not be able to deal with this through Policy Review and Development Committee and get it into the next round of councils. That's the first thing. So if I can be so bold as to suggest that if the policy is, for all the other elements of the policy, if council is comfortable, then... Um, what we can do is give a commitment that point four is to be reviewed. Remembering it is a policy, it's not LAW law, it's a policy. And we can review perhaps in the next sitting of the Policy Review and Development Committee with further background information on part four to see if there's any further wording changes that need to be then re rec recommended back to council if that, uh, if that suits Mr. So with that uh, recommendation in front of us, deal with that. So, oh. My thinking would be that the recommendation sits as it is, uh, with very clearly in the minutes that the um, part four is to be referred back to the Policy Review and Development Committee for further investigation. Councillor Stack, are you satisfied with that? So long as it's referred to in the minutes, I'm happy. Thank you, Councillor Stack. So, back to the recommendation in front of us. We have moved by Councillor McCurry, a second of our Councillor Hayward, as is. Uh, do we have a speaker against this? No? Councillor McCurry, would you like to close? Thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Yes. Yeah. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Ten point five point one, councillors. Uh, this. Do we have a mover for this? Um, sir, this is the pink
That's fine. Uh, well, we need someone to move, but we move behind closed doors. Councillor Steck, if you want to move that way. Well, I'll move behind closed doors, please. A second. Thank you, Councillor Giles. Uh, all those in favour? Yeah. That's carried. Thank you, Media. We'll, we'll